you and I have this, uh, in one of our earliest, earlier podcasts, we talked about BHAG mm-hmm. having this larger, you know, a big, hairy, audacious goal. I think if you have this massive goal, that could be a daunting one. That side hustle makes it a lot more achievable. What's going on, everyone? And welcome to another episode of Ready, Set, Sell. My name is Michael Siervo, and this is one of the greatest if not the greatest sales podcast in the universe. And alongside with me, of course, is entrepreneur extraordinaire, sales coach, and my good friend, Mr. Donnie Wong. What's up, sales world? What is up? This is going to be a, this, this is one episode that I am excited about. It may fracture our friendship for good. It's a battle royale. Mm -hmm. This is, this is Mm -hmm. going to go down, right? Mm -hmm. I'll tell you a quick story. I was in Vancouver not too long ago. Friend of mine, he's a pretty successful guy, dressed up nicely. And he said to me, he goes, yeah, I got the side hustle. I go, what do you mean we got side hustle? You make, it, you make it a lot of money. And he goes, yeah, I'm just walking dogs. So I said, why are you walking dogs? It's not like you need the money. And he goes, he gets a chance to meet a lot of girls. Mm-hmm. Single dude in Manitoba. Mm-hmm. He goes, Mike, how am I going to meet girls? He goes, this is a great opportunity. Which brings us to opportunities, side hustles. Is this a distraction or is it the path to financial freedom? Donnie, what do you think? Well, this is where you and I really uh, diverge in how we approach <laughs> things. You are the you're the side hustle machine. You love side hustles. You love getting volume, and you love being, um, as you call it, risk adverse mm. or <laughs> well, diversification. Diversification. Yeah, side, side hustle. I'm, I'm a little bit different. Where I believe um, side hustles fracture your focus. And mm. so I do believe in the side hustle from someone who's done a lot of side hustles myself. And now uh, my company, my main company was the result of a side hustle, but I very much oppose uh, uh, side hustles for the most part, okay. unless there's some, you know, some real deep rooted foundation set up in flow number one. Mm. So can't wait to have this talk with you today. Yeah. And this is going to be a great dialogue, uh, Donnie. We've, we've had I mean, you've had side hustles, I've had side hustles. And I think ultimately what our audience needs to get out of this is to determine whether or not they should be ready for side hustle. Because, you know, at the end of the day, here's what I truly think Mm -hmm. is there's no right or wrong answer, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? Because it's it's worked. Obviously, it's worked for some people. Obviously, it's distracted a lot of people. But hopefully we could guide our audience to help them make a decision whether or not it's it's a distraction or an enhancement to their overall goals. But I'll tell you something, over the pandemic, one thing that's really expanded was this whole idea of the gig economy. Right. Which is, you know, $455 billion. And it's the idea that people can make side income doing other things in partnership with other jobs. Might be a full-time job, it might be a bunch of other different side hustles. But the reason why I bring it up is, the average millionaire has anywhere from six to seven different income streams. Now I'm not saying that they're all doing side hustles, but there's different ways of income coming in. And I believe that the side hustles is at least one to two of those income streams. And that is why my stance today is that everyone should have one. I'm going on record. Everyone, everyone should have at least one side hustle. Well, I don't disagree with that, but I think we're going to get into the minutia. All right. And so for you, you all the audience out there who are joining us today, uh, strap up, get get ready, because we're going to dig into, should you get a side hustle? When is the side hustle going to be toxic? What is the proper way to get a side hustle? And ultimately, um, who's right, which in this show means, automatically means who's more handsome, Michael or Donnie. <laughs> right. Well, you know, there's some statistics. Let's frame our entire conversation yes. as to what That's- is a side hustle. Of course, a side hustle is is, a, is an additional form of income income Mm -hmm. that's going to complement your overall, you know, portfolio, your goals. And here's some quick statistics that I just want to read out to you. It's interesting that men are nearly 90% more likely to have a side hustle as compared to women. Mm. That's interesting. And then the other thing is those between 18 and 35 are most likely to have a side hustle with 49% saying that they already do. But that doesn't necessarily mean they're successful in their side hustle. Right, right. Uh, Go on. I also throw in there that um, uh, that's such a that's an entire generation yeah, where it's absolutely. easier now more than ever for 35 and under to have the side hustle, the advent of uh, digital technology, social technology, uh, uh, mobile handhelds. Whereas if you're 40 and up, very hard to do a side hustle when they were in the, exactly that age group, right? That 18 right. to 40 generation for us, very, very tough. I, I would agree with you and disagree with you. Mm-hmm. I would say that yes, it, it's different because they are a little bit older. Mm-hmm. But my challenge to you is that 
they probably will have a higher probability of success if they were to do a side hustle. It might take them a little bit longer to learn the technology, the platforms and so forth, but there's a heck of a lot more skill coming from a, a 45 year old man or a 55 year old man with decades of experience mm -hmm. versus a 19 year old kid who really doesn't have a lot of life experience. So I would argue with you that, mm -hmm. sure, it might be a little bit easier to start a hustle, but the success rate of the side hustle is likely going to be higher for those 40 and up, I would say. Really? I would say that, yeah. In fact, there's a there's a quick st uh, statistic here, it's, and it's talking about the average income of a side hustle. So when you take a look at someone who's age 18 to 24, the average income is about $533 per month, mm. which isn't a lot. I mean, mm. if you're 18 years old, you're making 500 bucks, great. You could, you could pay for your car, mm -hmm. something like that. You fast forward that to somebody who's 45 to 55, the average income, this is in USD, is about $892. So now it starts to become a little bit more meaningful. But fast forward to someone who's 55 to 64 years old, and the average side hustle income is about $1,000, $1,061, which could be another mortgage payment. What, what was that last age group there? Uh, 55 to 64. That's interesting. Yeah, it, it is interesting. I, I didn't realize that, but you got to ask the questions like, what are they actually do to, doing? What is the side hustle? There's right. so many different side hustles out there. But I mean, when you take a look at the statistics, like what are people actually using the side hustle for? And you and I had this, uh, in one of our earliest, earlier podcasts, we talked about BHAG mm -hmm. having this larger, you know, a big, hairy, audacious goal. I, I think if you have this massive goal, that could be a daunting one. That side hustle makes it a lot more achievable Let's say, for instance, your goal is to pay off your house. Mm -hmm. An extra thousand dollars a month, you're going to significantly pay off that house a lot faster. Absolutely, right? absolutely. So uh, another reason why, personally, for me, I'm so involved with Airbnb. I believe everyone should have at least one Airbnb, mm -hmm. right? If they're just trying to pay off their mortgage faster, get an additional stream of income, Airbnb for sure one of the best ones out there. But that brings me to my first point here today about the side hustle is that. We are kind of in the age, especially if you're 18 to 35, where you know every third ad is touting a brand new side hustle, mm. one where it's um, you know no experience needed. Yeah, you're gonna make a ton of money. It's gonna be fully passive overnight. Just buy this course, <laughs> you're right? Buy this course for 4.99, and you're gonna be the next rich kid, laptop lifestyle, right? Mm -hmm. And I'd like to start from right there because I think the the allure of what a side hustle is, is maybe has been perverted, has been distorted okay. through fast riches, get rich quick schemes, or to sell you this fantasy of not having to work anymore, right? To build something fully passive. Uh, we've seen this in Amazon dropshipping. We've seen this in SMMAs back in the day, right? Social media marketing agencies. We see this in all types of different arbitrage. Rental arbitrage is very popular in my industry of Airbnb where they're saying, don't need any money. You get uh, 10 of these, you're rich. Mm -hmm. Anyone can learn this and you can do it overnight. Just buy my course for $2,999. Right. Sorry, $2,997. Oh yeah, a, a deal. That That's $2. right. You, okay, you have a good point there that there is a bit of trickery mm -hmm. that is, the, it, and, and that actually goes back to a couple of other podcasts we had about fake it till you make it, right? right? Are you swindling, are some of these people swindling other people to, to buy their courses? I would argue that the side hustle in its essence and the purity of it has a lot more value than the drawbacks. So the mm -hmm. drawbacks, will it distract you? Maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. I know I, I'd love to debate about you right. with you about this. I don't think if it's the right side hustle, I think it actually amplifies mm -hmm. what you currently want to do versus distract you. Now there's some side hustles that completely, completely distract you. Yes. But I think if you could get away from those courses, forget about these courses about, uh, oh yeah, you, you take zero, you know, to two hours of your week and you're gonna make, you're gonna live on a beach, all that other stuff. We could automate blah, 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 this, this, that. Can you do that? No, right? Mm -hmm. I think it it takes effort, it takes skill, it takes uh, the, the commitment to keep following the side hustle until it becomes something meaningful over time. Right, right, okay, so let's do that. Let's okay. refine this and let's cut out all the garbage. Okay. So scams aside, flashy headlines and big promises aside, for somebody who say maybe doing their nine to five right now, who said, man, I need, I, I'm just not making enough. Mm -hmm. Side gigs, side hustle, let's focus on that bandwidth right. and then we get to the fun stuff later. So this is how what I think about um, side hustles is that 
A lot of people, first and foremost, they don't understand that if you pick the wrong side hustle, you might end up building yourself another full-time job. Okay. So a lot of people, especially if you're not doing something like, uh, well, even Airbnb is the easiest one, but they don't understand that your side hustle isn't just selling this, selling X. Right. It's now you've actually, you have to take care of the accounting, you have to take care of the marketing, you have to take care, now you have to understand taxes as a solopreneur, as a um, maybe an independent contractor. There's so much more you have to do. It's not just fulfilling the product. Mm -hmm. Now you're a solopreneur, you have to wear hats on every single one. And I find a lot of people may not understand that right. before you sign up for your side hustle. A lot of things we see is um, social media. Mm -hmm. if, if I can just make a social media agency, well, I'm gonna be rich and it's not gonna cost me anything. Well, guess what? Or Amazon drop shipping is another right. one. Well, what they don't tell you is that, hey, this new side hustle of yours, now you have to learn completely new technology. You have to learn how to find evergreen products. You have to understand how to fulfill these jobs at a high rate. Right. And you have to now understand the platform of which you're on. Not only that, now you're gonna have to also um, understand, hey, how do I sell this product? And if you don't have sales experience, guess what? You now have to learn how to sell. You also have to learn how to market your business. You have to learn how to make sure you understand how to do the accounting and the books. Mm -hmm. So now you've actually just built seven more jobs in your side hustle. Okay, so perhaps, but what if you've created, if, if the whole idea of this premise is a side hustle is a pathway to financial freedom, mm -hmm. not a distraction. So if you're taking a look at it as a pathway to financial freedom, what if you reframe that and said, well, this side hustle has given me seven opportunities to hone my craft and learn skills, learn marketing, learn sales, learn technology, things that if I was reserved or, or, or relegated to my career, my, the comfort level, and I didn't reach outside of that comfort level, those skills would never manifest. Those skills would never come around. So will the side hustle make you monetarily rich for that particular side hustle? Maybe, mm -hmm. but I, I truly, truly believe that the side hustle will make you become a, become a better business person mm -hmm. if it is in alignment to your existing skill set. Right. It, it can be too far away. Like I'm not going to create a side hustle being a computer programmer. That's not my jam. But if I wanted to do sales coaching, if I want to write a book, something along those lines, I might take up that podcast. We launched the podcast because you and I are very, very talkative people. Hey, if we can monetize that, speak of which, yes, buy our merch one day, it's going to come. Um, that side hustle just makes you a better uh, you know, person, better business person. Yeah, that part we can definitely agree on. If, it's, if you're in alignment with your, with your first hustle mm -hmm. and it doesn't distract you, that's where I would encourage someone to do a side hustle, where, my, where I vehemently tell people to back off a little bit is if they're trying to chase you know, chase okay, the glitter because okay. all the glitter is not gold. And that's where I think what people run into, hey, I can do this thing and make a ton of money really quickly. Well, that's not how it works, right? Because even though it may make you a better business person, I think, I don't have a stat for this, but I could say that maybe at least half, we can maybe agree on half the population is doing side gigs. Yep. They don't have any entrepreneurial experience. So now it's trial by fire. Yeah, but how would they get that entrepreneur experience without doing the side hustle? Imagine if they went full blown and they had that hubris, that, you know, unwarranted confidence mm -hmm. and they went out and said, screw you, Mr. Employer, I'm going to quit my job. They walk out in a blaze of glory, start their business and they completely fail. Right. Where I think a side hustle, let's say, for instance, give an example, let's say you're a salesperson and you love to cook or I love to cook, whatever it might be. You start to hone your craft. Maybe you start to do a I don't know, sushi and you start to um, cater. If if all of a sudden all the people are like, hey, your stuff is really, really good. It's a safe entry point, maybe not jumping into the catering business, but at least give you an inkling that you might be onto something. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. and, that, and that's where I think I think side hustle is a good thing. Yeah. So I'll, th I'll throw this at you then. Most people I find love the idea of chasing a passion, mm -hmm. but they don't understand what it's like to build the business of the passion. Okay. Whereas say for instance, you might be a good chef, but you have no idea how to run a business or you have no idea how to run a catering business. Mm -hmm. And so what we see a lot of times is maybe they'll, they'll get the idea started based on what their strengths are. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have more of an artistic back, artistic, not autistic <laughs> background. You have an artistic background. So 
hey, I can do the design. I kind of understand what my logo should look like. Right. But when it comes to now you have to sell your services, holy cow. Now I have to figure out how to sell my services. How do I even price my product? I don't understand anything about margins. Now I have to bring on all this inventory, which in your case would be food. Now we have wastage costs. Costs. Now, again, trial by fire. Right. So now you're going through the motions, but ultimately, and now your guy who was, uh, you know, the, 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 the well-to-do fellow there who's walking the dogs to mm-hmm. meet girls, that's a great way to start a side hustle because there's no pressure. Mm-hmm. But if I would say most of the people starting a side hustle is because mm-hmm. they want more money. They need to increase their revenue. And that's a very tough way to figure out how to increase your revenue when you have so many other factors that are consistently pulling revenue out of your business. Mm. So that's the part where I think, listen, starting a a side hustle, if maybe you do a business in a box, right? Uber, Lyft, Airbnb, where the platforms are so powerful, they're gonna take care of all those parts of the business, your marketing, your sales, your payment processing, no inventory, then it gives you such an easier entry point. So I don't mind those ones, Mm -hmm. but I still find that you're trading time for money, which ultimately, and why I I take such a hard stance on this, because in my job, I've I've spoken to over 1500 people in the past 18 months alone. Mm. And I always ask them, well, why do you want to start an Airbnb business? It's always the same three things, Michael. What are And they always say, I want to do this because I want to quit asking my boss for time off. I hate that my boss dictates the time I get off and how long I get off. Okay. The second reason is financial freedom. It's not that they want to get rich. They just don't want any more financial stress. Mm. And then the third one is usually, well, it's because I want to build something I can call my own. Mm. I don't mind hard work. I just don't want to put in eight hours and build something for someone else. Well, in none of those does the side hustle immediately solve for anyone unless you just happen to get a side job that makes an incredible amount of cash that solves all your money problems. Mm. Cause what I'm trying to get at the point is you dive into a side hustle, you just cracked open a can of worms mm-hmm. that will turn your side hustle almost into a full-time hustle. And, and, and I could hear where you're coming from, where that makes sense that it could detract you. It could be a distraction. My point is that it could be a, good distraction. Mm. There are other things in life that could distract you completely. You say, Hey, look, you know, you get sucked into a football fantasy league and that's all you focus on or whatever it might be. You you get, you you start playing video games and that is your distraction. My, my stance is, can it distract you? Yes, but it it is a good distraction. If you're distractible, you're likely going to be distracted regardless, right? But if you can use the side hustle as a positive distraction, and let's say for instance, the guy who's actually has this inkling of he wants to, he wants to start a side hustle, they're just too scared to, to, to leave their job, mm-hmm. right? Yes. So if you're, if you're scared to leave your job, absolutely consider a side hustle. But I think there are certain things in order for you to actually execute on it, you, you need to establish a few things. You need to establish what is your, what is your skill set? Um, what is your expectation? Yes. And, and this is where I think, and I'd love to get your feedback on this, because when you talked about the trickery and, and, and the gurus, a lot of it could be MLM, multi-level marketing. Say, hey, look, if you jump in and pay for this, you, you could be a business owner. There's tax advantages. We know that majority of people who join these MLMs don't make any money, but they'll come back and be like, yeah, I'm a better salesperson. I'm a better Mm -hmm, person. mm -hmm. Right. So I I don't know what your thoughts on that, but I think there's a bit of trickery there and and it's, it's in a disguise of a side hustle where you do this part-time and eventually if you have a multiple people underneath you, you could quit your job. I've never seen a single person. I, I could be challenged after this, but there's not many statistically who actually do exceptionally well using MLM. So I don't know if your thoughts on that, we could go into this tangent, but I'm very, very curious what are your thoughts on, on MLM? Um, ooh. I love MLM because it gives you the support and it gives you the community that you need as somebody who's diving into business maybe for the first time. Okay. So in that sense, you do meet a lot of people. Um, however, MLM is tough because they are masters of high pressure, large group attention therapy type of sales, right? Stage selling, Mm. if we're. Now, I don't want to say it in a bad light because, again, if you work the MLM and you have the skills, it does work. 
right? Okay. We can show examples. Um, a great example right now might be things like uh, Real. Real is a new, they've taken a new way of looking at a real estate brokerages mm. where they have said, you know what? Previous to this, you could only sell properties and that's how you make your money. So what okay. we're going to do now is we're going to take, um, give you a different model, different revenue streams. Not only can you sell and make commissions as a realtor, traditionally very high, but high ticket items. We're also going to now give you some sort of downstream revenue mm. where if you can build a team, we want to reward you for this without having to necessarily maybe do the old school and figure it all yourself. We built the infrastructure around this in a digital world to give you the tools, the mm -hmm. access and to organize your teams. It is literally an MLM. Yeah. But the MLM system, I believe does work. Here's where the skills where I think a lot of people don't understand is that if you do an MLM, you have to understand how to be a leader. You have to understand how to be a sales leader mm -hmm. because you have to understand how to teach them and make your team successful. Mm -hmm. You got to be ready for churn. Right. The biggest, uh, the biggest uh, uh, resource draining part of MLM is the human capital. Right. How do I find these people? But how do I keep them? Because yeah. they're going to burn out. Now, if you've never been through all these types of sales environments to teach them sales, because MLMs are all sales oriented, mm -hmm. there's always a product that you have to sell. But then you also have to do the recruiting, which is really the brunt of the business. Most people don't have those skills of recruiting, leadership, leadership development, sales development, mm -hmm. which makes it extremely hard to be successful in an MLM. But would you would you say that are people who have gone through the MLM process better than they were than they started? Like, are are they, are they better? And and this is going to come to the point is like at the end of the day, did that attempt at a side hustle successful or not? Did it lead you towards that path of financial freedom, which is, is the title of this this podcast? Yeah, you know what? If we're sp it's 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 very general, but I would say that there's going to be a normal distribution of of um, your success rate, right? Mm -hmm. Probably fifty percent of them are going to fail, um, and I think that's being pretty gracious. I was going to say like, more, that's more pretty most gracious for fail. MLMs, yeah. but I believe also that's because they don't understand how to develop your downline. You don't actually understand that you're trying to recruit the best people right. and the ones who fit sales role in a leadership recruiting role, right? But they need that because again, the nature of MLM is to get as many people as you can, throw shit on the wall, mm -hmm. whatever sticks, sticks. We're going to have our success stories. That's your 0 0.1, 0 0.1%. 1% will make money. 5% eh, are just kind of there because of the perks. 95% are probably not going to make it. Mm -hmm. Are they better going in, going out than then before uh, joining, I truly believe that's going to be your your regular distribution scale. Yeah, skewed a lot more in the no for for MLMs. Really? Yeah, yeah. Because some people will be like, "Oh, I got burned by this," and don't ever try that. But there's going to be a group that have become. They're like, "Hey, this didn't work," but I read a lot more than I ever did. Mm -hmm. I got a great community of people who are entrepreneurs. I never thought I was able to be an entrepreneur and, um, you know, not knock on MLM. They are the, the most prototypical uh, abuser of the idea of, of side hustles. And, and I, I'm, you know, I listened to Grant Cardone's book. Uh, what is it? Uh, was a millionaire guidebook. Or oh, something. the millionaire handbook the handbook. Yeah. And this he could, says, this could be a whole episode. Oh yeah. Itself. But, but he talks about that. Yeah. He says, everyone should have an MLM, not for the purpose of that you're going to be rich because right. most of them don't. It's that you don't know shit about business, right? This is going to allow you at least like a very safe step and you're, what do you have to lose, right? My, my attitude about a side hustle, and this is really at the, the, the crux of all of it, is my attitude is what do you have to lose if you could really streamline that side hustle to, to elevate and be in alignment to what your long-term goals are. Mm -hmm. So let's say for instance, I want to do public speaking, right? Right. I want to go do public speaking. I don't know how to do that. Then you start with writing, you start doing blogs and that becomes your side hustle, right? But, but it helps you nurture and harness these skills. The other thing it does do is it takes you away from that monotony of what you're currently doing, right? You, you get away from the idea of just working at nine to five, because the worst thing that ever happens, Donnie, is that people like when they're 60 years old, they have that regret. And that's why I see that the, the most successful side hustlers are those who are 50 to 64 mm -hmm. is because they've had a full career. They're doing it because they're, they're thinking, I have something of value to offer. I don't want to have any regret. I do have some money set aside that if I fail, I'm going to be okay. Where I think it could be really dangerous is that younger person 
who says, I need to have seven different multiple income streams. You're 18 years old, man. You need some life experience. Um, so m my attitude is, I think you need a side hustle. It mm -hmm. makes you become a better entrepreneur. It is a safe environment for you to, you know, learn the ropes, get your reps in, right? Get rejected, find people who can uh, understand the shared pain that we're going through without taking the full blown commitment of starting a new job. That's, that, that's my view that I, 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 I don't think it's a distraction, Donnie. This, this is how I, how I view it. Now, I don't disagree with what you're saying. Here's where my caveat would be. How about okay. that? Okay. And uh, I've just seen this countless times. So this is what I would say to anybody out there who maybe your nine to five isn't paying enough. Mm -hmm. So therefore you're almost, oh shit, I need a side hustle from, um, from desperation or just from unhappiness where it's like, you know, I got my job, I'm making money, but I'm not really getting ahead. Mm. So therefore, okay, let me find a side hustle. Here's where the dangers of the side hustle, where I believe are, which is if you don't actually define, well, why? Mm. Why do you need more money and how much would it actually, what's your goal? Because if you're just randomly going here, just think thinking that you're going to make a ton of money, if you're not clear on it, that's where marketing will get the hold of you. The marketing is so powerful these days, it's hard to ignore where you can actually see someone like, like I work for a very, very reputable, um, reputable Airbnb educational company. We give up more free content than everybody else by far, mm. but we also have a paid course. But if you don't know what you want out of it and you just think you're gonna get rich overnight, you're gonna have a very, uh, you've also hand, almost handicapped yourself going in because you don't have a goal you're heading towards. You're just kind of getting you're, you're, you're chasing this, um, you're chasing the, 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 the what's that called? The, the mirage in the desert. Right. If you're unhappy with your job, then you gotta figure out, well, what is it that you're unhappy about? Are you actually unhappy from the work? Are you unhappy you're not making enough? Or are you unhappy that maybe you're just not as successful as what society is showing you on, on your media? Mm -hmm. Figuring out which one of those is, is the one that you're trying to solve first, I think goes a long way. Why is because, again, for those three reasons I talked to everyone about, again, I've talked to 1,500 people from all across North America. It's not just something that like, I kind of guessed at. This, these are real conversations. Over 1,500 hours have been put into these conversations. And what I always realize is after talking to those people is, you know what? $5,000 of additional revenue every single month mm -hmm. could change an entire family. Absolutely. But you know what the number one answer I get from everyone is? $10,000. Second one in 1A, a million dollars. When I ask them, well, that's great. How did you come up with that? What is, what is the significance of $10,000 per month? They don't know. Mm. I don't care how rich you are. If you even just made an extra $5,000, that's going to change something. Maybe if you're not, if you're worth with $50 million, sure, but an additional $5,000, if you could just divert that to any one of your causes, you could instantly change um, um, you know, somebody's life, an organization, whatever the heck it is. You can move the needle somewhere somehow. So what I always tell, what I would, if anyone walked up to me and they say, hey, I'm looking for a side gig, I always try and figure out why. Why, right. why are you going out for the side gig? Because oftentimes, you know, if you're making enough money, but you're just unhappy with your work, mm -hmm. sometimes chasing a side hobby is more important because it fulfills your purpose to express yourself. Right. And if you get good enough at that, understanding how to monetize that, mm. I believe is a skill that's more important than a side hustle. I believe understanding how to monetize something is more responsible, is more laser pointed than jumping onto somebody else's system just arbitrarily for the, the thought of, hey, that's gonna make me the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Mm -hmm. You know what? I, I I agree with you. I can see where you're coming from with respect to that. Um, if you can monetize that hobby, I love that because now the goal is not driven by money. Because oftentimes when the goal is driven by that, that's a fake goal. The goal is freedom. It's, you know, spending more time with family. It's, it's whatever it might be. Um, you know, just, just taking time to travel around the world. I think once you can identify the reason why you want to 
take aside the free hours of the day that you could be doing because it's sacrifice. It goes back to our conversation. You, you're taking away time from your family, your kids, exactly. your health, all that stuff to start this brand new job or this task. But I think if somebody really says, okay, this is what I want to do. I want to try this and give it a shot and also temper expectations. I'll give you a great example. I was watching this, uh, this someone on, on TikTok and, and they asked their father, this is great. Uh, I, sh I should find it. And he paid off his mortgage quite quickly. I said, dad, how did you pay off your mortgage? He says, it's actually quite simple. He goes, he looked for a 30 year mortgage because your payments are lower, mm -hmm. right? So he extended it 30 year mortgage. And he says every single year he put one extra mortgage payment down. And the reason being is that one extra payment down did not go towards interest. 100% went into principal. And that 30 year mortgage was paid off after, after 17 years. 17 years if he did the math he's like and that made sense to me so all it takes so if your side hustle for instance if you have the expectation that you want to pay off a mortgage sooner 30 years versus 17 years that's a meaningful difference that's, wow. that's 13 years and if your side hustle is to only earn let's say two thousand dollars a year then it, i think it's a lot worth it to learn these skills because now you're not thinking about the time you're losing you're thinking about holy crap, I just gained 13 years because I trimmed off all that crap for my mortgage. And that's when I start to think about the whole entire idea of the side hustle. Because he mm -hmm. says, if you can make an if you can make an extra uh, mortgage payment, so I don't know what mortgage payments, whoever, uh, you know, it could be anywhere from $1,500 to 2000 or 5000 whatever it might be. If you could say, this is my goal, I'm going to make one extra mortgage payment, I'm going to learn a skill because the end result is I'm going to end off paying this mortgage off at 17 years. That to me tells me that the side hustle is worth it. Yeah, there's no argument there. There's no argument. I, I, th I guess the final thing would just be in that example would be the time, mm -hmm. the time commitment, because, you know, if you're spending an extra four hours a day, you know, you do your you, you do your seven hours at your normal job, then yeah. you're spending four hours each day to only do one mortgage payment mm -hmm. while, you know, the, the ROI is not there. Right. That, that's a ridiculous example, obviously. Yeah. But that's that's what I always, um, that's how I've calculated it. Now, right. it's more of a, a um, you know, personal example. I believe one of the questions you should ask is time. Is your side hustle, how much time can it win you back? Mm. For some people, time is money, okay. right? Whereas, hey, if I could just win back, hey, $2,000 per month, well, I could probably cut my hours down. I hear this lots from nurses. For nurses specifically, they say, man, they, they're overworked, they're underappreciated. If I could just win back that much time, well, that's worth it for me. Well, the thing about time is that if we just speak on time alone, if you're trying to win back your time, more than likely most of the people, they're 90, you know, overwhelming majority of people out there is your work takes up the most time. Mm -hmm. So what's easy about that is that we can simply calculate how much it takes to win back your time. So let's just say you make $50 an hour. Okay, great. Which means, you know, if you're there for eight hours a day, was that $400? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, if we can just win back one day a week, mm. what if you could have a long weekend every single day? What's the math on that? Mm -hmm. Well, in this scenario, $400 per day, if we just have, you know, four days off a week, let's just say it's that Monday, that's only $1,600 a month. Mm -hmm. But at $1,600 a month, we win back every Monday. Now that, now that's something worth going after. And guess what? Four hundred dollars per week—that's easy to do. Yeah, it's not that hard, right? right? That's what seventy bucks or something. Like yeah, that. And, and you know, it goes back to the idea that the world where it was decades ago, you couldn't go up on Fiverr or Upwork. No chance. You, it didn't exist. No chance. But if you're good, if you have a certain skill, let's say a, you're a singer. You know, maybe maybe do a gig. Mm -hmm. Maybe do a gig once a week, whatever it might be. Maybe doing vo voiceovers, you know, do copywriting. I think at the end of the day, the idea is one, are you willing to sacrifice the time? Two, do you actually have a very clear goal as to what is going, like why are you doing the side hustle? And, and three, do you have something, like does it complement your overall skill set? Does it, does it complement uh, who you are, is it something that's not, it shouldn't add additional stress. That's my point. I think an, a side hustle should um, have more value. Sure, you're gonna, uh, you're gonna put in more time because in the early stages, you're creating a job for yourself, but definitely a side hustle, if you're doing it properly, 
it shouldn't be stressful. Hopefully you could turn, I love your idea, turn a hobby. If you monetize a hobby, that's great. And I think my takeaway from this is, because you had some really good points, is you know, find something that uh, you're passionate about, right? Because you will sacrifice, you will sacrifice time. Uh, and, and something, if it's just money alone, that side hustle, you're gonna hate it, right? But if it's growth, personal self-development, if you're gonna pay off that mortgage, whatever it might be, uh, I, I think the risk to start a side hustle is a lot less. And I think everyone should at least try it um, in a very, very safe way. Yeah, you're absolutely right on there. We are at the, the golden age. There's never been a time yeah. where you could make money as seamlessly. We have technology that can help you learn anything as fast as possible. We have different, um, we do have great educators out there where you can learn by investing. The The challenge is, the challenge is wading through the shit yeah. to get to the gold. Right. And um, I think the over you know, the overarching theme to this, because we've just done so many side hustles is if you're going to start one, first off, hey, figure out your why. Yeah. What are we solving here? Is it time? Is it family? What is it? Solve for that. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to figure out, hey, where we get the biggest returns. The second thing we're going to do is if you could monetize something you're already good at, monetize your strength. That is something that's incredible because we are at the age where you can monetize doing anything from the written word. If, you, if you're a good writer, well, guess what? There's tons of ways to, to monetize yeah. your writing. If you're great on camera, hey, there's infinite ways to make money off a of camera. Maybe you like selling stuff. Maybe you're not very good at sales. Well, there's tons of platforms now that can get rid of the sales aspect. In other words, there's technology that can cover for your weaknesses and amplify your strengths. And then lastly, understand that there is opportunity out there, but beware knowing that, hey, there's going to be a journey ahead. There's going to be lots of things you have to learn, but if you do it right, it can be worth it. Absolutely. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. At the end of the day, we talked about side hustle. The one thing I do want you to take away, forget about the side. It's really all about the hustle. That's right? 100%. It, right. it really is all about, are you willing to hustle? Because you could take that effort and focus on what you're currently doing and it's not a distraction and really become the master of it. Or you could take that same effort, put it into something else and hey, maybe that that side hustle becomes a real hustle. But at the end of the day, Donnie, it really comes down to hustle. So there really isn't stalemate here. I think the answer is it depends, right? Um, what do you guys think? Like, uh, do you have a side hustle? Is there something that's keeping you up at night? Do you, are you in a, prof a profession or a job that maybe it's monotonous? Maybe are you the right person that has the right temperament and are willing to sacrifice for a side hustle? Um, you know, if, if you are, I would recommend find programs that work, find a community that can help do your research first. Don't get sucked into the hype and a uh, shameless plug to my friend, contact Donnie Wong. He's been helping a lot of people with side hustles with his Airbnb. Uh, there's a great community out there. So with that said, Donnie, great show. Yeah, great show. And for you guys out there, um, one great resource. If you are in a place where you thought you're, where, you know, you're not making enough or you'd like to make more, you want to take care of your family, you want to take care of yourself, you really want to set up a life of freedom. Um, I believe the very first step is financial IQ. Mm. Before you go for a hustle, take care of the existing money and make sure you have your financial uh, foundation set. And I really recommend it. We've talked about it a little bit in this show, which is Grant Cardone's book, The Millionaire Handbook. When I moved back home about six years ago, I moved back with nothing but my suitcase and I had horrible, horrible financial IQ. This gave me the elementary foundation. And to this day, it gave me certain rules to make sure that I was fighting for my time, not for a paycheck. And um, there's actionable stuff for any of you guys out there who are interested. If you can't find it, I think Grant sells it for like two bucks. Yeah. The audio book is so two good. bucks, whatever the heck it is. I listen to it at least once a year. Um, when I And when I first moved back in 2017, I listened to it probably 20 times. It was the only thing I listened to on repeat. If you guys are interested, Grant Cardone's Millionaire Handbook. And of course, if you guys are interested in what we're doing here, if you wanna figure out, hey, if you guys have questions, how have we made a side hustle successful, feel free to write us, DM us. We answer every comment, every message you send to us. Awesome, Donnie. Guys, 
Don't put your hustle to the side. Hustle all the time. Take care. And again, thank you for joining us on another episode of Ready, Set, Sell. <laughs> and uh, hopefully this was of value. Donnie, great having you on the show. See you next week, guys. Take care, guys. Peace. Peace.